Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about using for loops in Python. Now, a for loop is a special type of loop in Python which allows us to loop over different collections of items. So, a lot of times we'll use for loops in Python to like loop through different arrays or we could loop over like the letters inside of a string, or we could just loop through like a, a series of numbers. So for loops provide a very specific purpose. And the easiest way to kind of wrap your head around why for loops are useful is just for me to show you guys uh, a bunch of different examples. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. We're gonna look at why for loops are awesome. So down here in my text file and my uh, Python file, I'm gonna write out a couple of different for loops. So the way that we create a for loop is just by saying for, and now what I wanna do is specify a variable. And this variable is going to essentially represent a different value every time we go through this for loop. And you guys will see how that works in a second, but just know that this variable is going to be used on every iteration of our for loop and each time it will most likely have a different value. So in our case, I'm just gonna call this letter and I'm gonna say for letter in, and now what I wanna do is I wanna specify a collection that I wanna loop over. One example of this would be like a string. So I could put a string in here, I could just put like draft academy, and now I can just put a colon. And so basically what this is gonna say is it's gonna say for every letter inside of draft academy i want to do something and so down here inside of this for loop and again we need to indent this we can put what we want to do with each letter so let me just show you guys like basically what this is going to do so i can print out a letter so i can print out this letter variable and it's actually going to print out a different letter inside of this draft academy string on every single iteration of this loop so I'm gonna run this program and down here inside of my console, you'll see that I'm basically printing out Draft Academy. So on the first iteration of the loop, I printed out the first letter in Draft Academy, which was G. On the second iteration of the loop, I printed out I, third was R, fourth was A. So I'm essentially just looping through all of the letters inside of Draft Academy. So I'm saying for each letter in Draft Academy, I wanna print out that letter. And so this is kind of like how for loops can be used. We can define a variable and that variable will change on each iteration of the loop, right? So on the first iteration of the loop, this letter variable represented a G. On the second iteration of the loop, the letter variable stored the value I, et cetera, right? So we went through this entire string and we were able to print out each letter. So in addition to using this with strings, we can also use this with other collections, for example, like an array. So if I created an array up here, let's just call it friends. I'm gonna set this equal to a bunch of different values. So we can put like a list of our friends in here. We can say like Jim, Karen, and Kevin. Instead of saying letter, why don't we call this friend? And I could say for friend in friends. And now we'll print out the friend. So over here, I'm saying for each friend inside of this friends array, I wanna print out the friend. So now we'll actually be able to print out each element inside of that array. So down here, you'll see we're printing out Jim. And then on the second iteration, we're printing out Karen. And on the third, we're printing out Kevin. So I'm able to loop through all of the values inside of the array. And just so you guys know, like, you can name this variable whatever you want. So I could name, I could give this like any random name. And if I wanna access it though, I have to access it using that same name. So we can loop through uh, something like an array. We could also just loop through a series of numbers. So I could say index over here. And again, this can be anything. I'm just gonna call it index. So we could say for index in range and then in here I can pass in a number. So I could pass in like 10 for example. And down here I'm just gonna print out the index. When I run this program, you guys will see that it's basically gonna print out every number in the range from zero to 10, not including 10. So starting with zero, it's gonna print out zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
but notice that it didn't print out 10. So it's essentially just printing out all the numbers between uh, 0 and 10, not including 10. You can also specify a, uh, a range of numbers. So I could say, for example, like 3 and 10. And now this will print out all the numbers between 3 and 10, not including 10. So we'll run this program. And you can see we print out 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and not 10. So whatever value that you put um, here in this second position is not going to get included in the range. And ranges can be uh, really useful. So for example, I could use a range to loop through an array just like we did before. So if I wanted, I could say something like for index in range. And now inside of this range, I can pass in the length of the array. So just so you guys know, if I wanted to get the length of this array, in other words, if I wanted to figure out how many elements were inside of it, I could just type out len and then inside parentheses, the name of the array. And so this is going to spit out three because there's three elements inside of here, right? Kind of makes sense. So what I can do is I can say down here inside of this range function, I can just type in len and then friends. And so what this is going to do is it's going to essentially give me a range between zero and the number of friends inside of this list. So down here, I could actually type out friends index, and this will allow me to access each individual friend inside of this list, just like we did before, but now I'm doing it with a range. So you can see I'm typing out Jim, Karen, and Kevin. So actually, for each iteration through this loop, it's basically going to be printing out friends zero, friends one, and then friends two, because in here we're passing in a three. And remember, whatever I pass in there, it's going to range from zero all the way up to that number, but not including that number. So that's another way that we could print out all the elements in the array. And looping through something like an array is actually a very, very common use case for for loops. But like I said, we can use for loops to loop through essentially any collection that we have. So we could loop through like a string. We could also loop through, um, you know, something like an array. So this can be really useful. And that's sort of the basics of for loops in Python. And I also want to show you guys one more example just while we're here. So why don't we go ahead and print out a range up to five, right? So this will just be a simple program. You can use all sorts of logic inside of these for loops. So let's say that I wanted to do something special on the first iteration of the loop. So I could say if index is equal to zero, and if the index is zero, then we know it's the first iteration of the loop. So I could do something special. I could like print out first iteration, and then otherwise we could just print like not first. So this would be an example of like, maybe you'd want to do something on the first iteration of the loop and do something else on subsequent iterations. So if I play this, you'll see only on the first iteration is it printing this out and otherwise it's printing out other stuff. So, you know, don't be afraid to put some complex logic inside of these for loops because it can really make your programs more powerful. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.